everyone. I'm Rochelle Chernowski. This is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, May 28th. On today's show, we preview tonight's movie night selection, the 1949 version of the famous novel Little Women. Peter Dice gives us an update on the Aquatic Center, and we'll also meet two neuropsychiatrists who are sharing the latest developments in mental health in an upcoming academy class. But first, we want to remind you about today's Library Book Talk event, taking place at 215 in the Social Center. Classic American writers are more popular than ever, with The Great Gatsby topping the box office. Come hear about Harriet Reese's favorite American authors, F. Scott Fitzgerald, John Steinbeck, Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, and others. It makes for a perfect summer reading list, and the event also includes our perennial favorite, light refreshments. So attend Library Book Talk happening this afternoon at 2.15 in the Social Center on the island. And then, if you want to see a literary masterwork brought to the silver screen, then tonight is your night. We're showing the 1949 film version of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, happening tonight at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center. Ann Wharton has this review. Hello again, I'm Ann Wharton, and welcome to Real Review. For Monday's film, we'll be showing the 1949 movie classic, Little Women. The film is based on the novel, Little Women, written by Louisa May Alcott. The story takes place in the Alcott family home in Concord, Massachusetts, during the Civil War. Little Women tells the story of the four March sisters. The oldest sister is Meg, and she is referred to as a beauty and is well-mannered. As the oldest, Meg runs the household when her mother is absent. Meg is played by Janet Lee. The second oldest of the four sisters is Josephine March, who is referred to as Jo. She is clumsy, blunt, opinionated, and jolly. Jo has a hot temper, which often leads her into trouble in spite of her good intentions. But with the help of her own sense of humor, her sister Beth, and her mother, she works on controlling it. Jo is played by June Allison. Amy is the third sister. She is described as a regular snow maiden with curly golden hair and blue eyes. She is pale and slender and always carrying herself like a very proper young lady. Amy can behave in a vain and spoiled way and throws tantrums when she is unhappy. Amy is played by Elizabeth Taylor. Beth is the fourth sister. She is shy and gentle and musical. She is very delicate and frail. Beth is especially close to her sister, Jo. She is beloved by all. Beth is played by Margaret O'Brien. The mother of the four wonderful sisters is played by Mary Astor. Their mother is called Marmy. She engages in charitable works and attempts to guide her daughter's morals to shape their characters. The father, Mr. March, is played by Leon Ames. He was formerly wealthy, but he helped friends who could not repay their debts, which has resulted in the family's poverty. Mr. Marsh is a scholar and a minister. He serves as a colonel in the Union Army and is wounded in December of 1862. Aunt Josephine March is played by Lucille Watson. She is Mr. March's aunt and a very rich widow. Aunt Josephine is temperamental and prone to being judgmental. She disapproves of the family's poverty and their charitable work and their disregard for more superficial aspects of society's ways. Peter Lawford plays a rich young man who lives next door to the March family with his overprotective grandfather. Little Women has three major themes. One, domesticity. Two, work. Three, true love. All of them are interdependent, and each is necessary to the achievement of the heroine's individual identity. There have been many films made of Little Women, but this is my personal favorite. The movie Little Women will be shown only once on Tuesday, May 28th at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center on the island. 
be sure to get your soda and popcorn and come enjoy this family drama that validates virtue over wealth. See you all at the movies. There's another cultural event happening this week, this one for all you art lovers out there. The Alliance for the Arts Complex in Fort Myers is hosting a juried art show exclusively for Florida-based artists, and you're invited. It's an Academy on the Go trip to the All Florida Juried Art Show, including a trip through the gift shop and a reception beforehand with light refreshments. It's happening this Friday with court pickup starting at 4.30 p.m. To sign up, call the Island Service Desk at 454-2282 or the Woodland Service Desk at 454-2054. We want to take a moment to preview an upcoming special meeting featuring Peter Dice. He'll be sharing the latest details about the Aquatic Center, including the current plans for construction. This happens next Monday at 2.45 p.m. in the Church Auditorium. Mr. Dice offers this preview. Hello friends, my name is Peter Dice, President of Shell Point. I'm here today to bring you some information that we hope will be helpful to you related to the Aquatic Center that you heard so much about in the last eight or nine months. We have been privileged to receive a lot of input and suggestions by our residents relative to the redesign and the new appointments to that pool as we look at refurbishing it after over 40 some years of service. We have taken the input from many of our residents who use the pool, who are interested in aquatic health, and we have pursued the plans and have placed them uh, with the county and now we're soon to have permits. We are in a position where we have bids in hand. We have been working with your help on a fundraising program to reach the goal that we feel we need to have in order to uh, pay for the cost of this uh, exciting new addition that will benefit so many people at Shell Point as they look at their own personal health. We're looking forward to sharing that, some of that information and I will be presenting uh, this package of information with a whole lot more detail at a meeting that's scheduled for June the 3rd in the Village Church at 2.45 p.m. and hope that you'll be there. It'll be our opportunity to share with you exactly where we stand, what the options are, the challenges that we have ahead of us, and the action that we would hope to take in the near future. Monday, June the 3rd at 2.45 p.m. at the Village Church. I hope you will come and be a part of that time together and hope it will also provide for you the information and the uh, insights that will be helpful to you and your interest and that will uh, give you a little bit more information about the exciting things that happen at Shell Point. I look forward to seeing you then, Monday, June the 3rd at 2.45 p.m. in the Village Church. Last week, we introduced you to two new members of Shell Point's behavioral health team. Dr. Chris Fadalato is always looking for new ways to serve the mental health needs of the Shell Point population. The newest opportunity happens this Thursday as we host an academy class with two experts from the Neuropsychiatric Research Center of Southwest Florida. Thanks to their research, it's now clearer than ever that early detection is the best treatment against conditions like Alzheimer's and other dementia disorders. But how can you keep your brain as fit as possible, as long as possible? Find out with Innovations in Brain Fitness, happening this Thursday at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Terry Colath has this preview. Hello everyone, I am here today with three healthcare professionals in the field of behavioral health, and we're talking about a program this Academy session, Innovations in Brain Fitness. I'd like to introduce you to Melissa Sheriff of the Neuropsychiatric Research Center, Angel Duncan of the Neuropsychiatric Research Center, I love saying that, and our own Dr. Chris Vadalato, our Director of Behavioral Health. Thank you so much. Let me just say what we, what we have come with as a description. Come mind your mind. How wonderful is that? A program focused on our mind and learn about brain health lifestyle factors and research from these experienced healthcare professionals. Included will be the norms in memory, when to be concerned, and how lifestyle affects dementia, along with the newest research information available. That is absolutely amazing, all of that in one program. Angel, your, um, your work is, um, well, you've pretty much come up with this program. Tell us a little bit about how and why you have chosen this. As you mentioned earlier, it's um, a topic that 
people need to gravitate to and want to gravitate to and learn more. Your brain is one of your most sophisticated organs and it needs to be kept alive and active. Alzheimer's disease is escalating in the numbers. It's continuing to grow. It's a healthcare crisis and it needs to be more awareness. There needs to be more education. People need to understand the disease instead of hiding from it. Mm -hmm. So start embracing your brain and learn about what's going on in research, what's going on in clinical trials so that we can find a cure and what you can do in the meantime and how your lifestyle plays a factor and things that are going to increase or decrease your risk. Uh -huh. Now you are in education, yes. that's the field. Is it exciting? Is it promising? Are you hopeful? I am hopeful. It's, a, you know, that's actually kind of a mixed question and I get, I, oftentimes people ask me, do you see a cure? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, I do potentially see a cure, only if people understand and get involved in clinical research trials. We're not going to find a cure unless people come out under the rocks and start getting involved. And say, I, here, I have this exactly. disease, what can I do? Exactly, it's your brain. Why wouldn't you want to do what you could? You can, um, you know, like cancer. Anytime anybody gets diagnosed with cancer, they're going to drive miles, fly to a treatment center to get involved in research and get it taken care of. Why wouldn't you do that with your brain? Ah, such good questions, such good questions. Melissa, your nursing background, lifestyle, what can we do, what should we do? Give us a little taste of what we'll find out. Well, obviously, with any disease process, it's all about, um, you know, taking care of your body as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more than just saying, okay, now that I have high blood pressure, you know, I need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's recognizing how can we be proactive and as we age, learning the different changes that we go through, such as we know that we don't metabolize as well, you know, as we age and or even though we might still be exercising, we might not be exercising at the same extent due to orthopedic issues or ambulatory issues. So um, the same thing goes with your brain. Simple things like wearing your helmet when you go biking, managing your blood pressure and your diabetes because clearly those affect our brain and how well it works, treating things like your sleep apnea because a well oxygenated brain is going to obviously function better. So it's looking at all of those things as a whole and just not separating you know, our brain from the rest of our body. There's this long-standing joke, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken yeah. better care of myself. Here we are at our ages, and it's so comforting to know we can still take better care of ourselves, and it makes a difference. And then, Dr. Vadalato, our residents can come to you. You're right here. Yes. You're right here, and it's so wonderful that you take part in this sort of um, information um, gathering and information sharing, and that you're involved with the Neuropsychiatric Research Center so that we can get this good information, we can refer people. And we can all play a role, and it's crucially important that we do. I think it's fascinating. We're, we're doing life quest here at Shell Point, you know, the, looking at the dimensions of wellness, and over and over and over again we hear that we're, it's a holistic approach to living. You know, your, your diet is, is not just for looking your best physically. It matters what's happening to these organs. And as you say, Angel, that most sophisticated organ we have. Mm -hmm. To know all of this in one, um, one sitting, we're very, very fortunate. So thank you so much. Thank you. Each of you for what you're gonna provide for us. Now I encourage you to attend Innovations in Brain Fitness and um, go away with some of this information brought to you by people who you can see really care about the field and know um, the right things to share with us. Coming up, it's time to go through all of Tuesday's happenings from resort services. Then after your Academy News and Menus, stay tuned for Village Church Connections. I hope you're having a fabulous day. I know Suzanne and I are, and we're excited about the opportunities available to all of you here at Shell Point today. We're going to start things off on Tuesday morning at 7.15 a.m. with Health Connections, Bend, Breathe, and Balance with Melanie Broad and the Health Club on the Island. And then at 8, we head to the tennis courts for Round Robin Men's Doubles Tennis. The Stamp Ministry volunteers will be gathering at 8.15 in the Stamp Room in the Tunnel. Head outdoors for the game of bocce at 8.30 at the Woodlands Court. 
And at 9.15, open painting will be taking place in the art studio, as well as shuffleboard outside the resident activity center. And at 9.30, match play mixed doubles tennis will be played. 10.15 is the time for Through the Bible Bible Study Group. They will be meeting in the Osprey Room on the island. Suzanne, take it away for the afternoon. At 12.30, Mixed Progressive Bridge will be played in the game room at the Woodlands. And at 1.15, we'll have the Knitters Group meeting in the Osprey Room, the Rollicking Recorderist meeting in the Tarpon Room, and the Women's Prayer Group meeting in the Hospitality Room of the Village Church. At 1.30, the Stamp Ministry will be in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. At 2.15, the Library Book Talk will take place in the Social Center on the island. And at 2.45, we have a Health Connections, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2 in the Health Club on the island, and that is closed. And then at 4.30, we have another Health Connections, Tai Chi Cha, also in the Health Club on the island, and it is closed. We'll end the day at 6.45 with Movie Night. This month, it'll be Little Women, a 1948 film, and it'll be played in the Social Center on the island. Well, we hope you have a wonderful Tuesday, and we'll see you back here for Wednesday. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth with your Academy information for Tuesday. At 9 o'clock, Beginning Pottery continues in the Pottery Studio on the island. And at 9.30, Advanced Memoirs on the Computer continues in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. At 9.45, Review and Practice Basic Computer Skills will take place in the Computer Teaching Center, and sign-up is required. At 10 o'clock, the Suez Canal, St. Catherine's Monastery, and Mount Sinai in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. You can sign up right at class. At 10.15, Apple iPad Tips and Techniques will be taking place in the Manatee Room on the island for those who have signed up. I'd like to take just a moment to tell you about some new opportunities in the Pavilion Auxiliary. We have openings on our Mail Committee, our Activities Committee, Beverage Cart Dining, Flowers, and Resident Relations. Please give me a call if you would like more information. 454-2254. Menus for Tuesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is turkey marsala with wild rice pilaf and asparagus. The dinner special is a build your own stir fry for eleven ninety five, and the soup of the day is chicken and white bean chili. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Tuesday, enjoy a mushroom Swiss burger with onion rings for six ninety five. The dinner special is grilled catfish with New Orleans potatoes, green beans, and tomatoes for $7.95. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Tuesday are cod for $16.95 or T-bone steak for $19.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Greetings and welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm here today with our senior pastor, Pastor Andy Hawkins, mm -hmm. and we are together because Andy is getting ready to launch a new sermon series beginning this Sunday night, and we want to explore that just a little bit together. Mm -hmm. Andy, I know that you will be talking uh, about Noah. Mm -hmm. And many of us are familiar with the biblical character of Noah. We know some of the details about the flood. And uh, we even sang a song when we were growing up as children about yeah. Noah and the ark. But you've entitled this sermon series, The Noah You Never Knew. Yeah. Well, that's the problem, you know. I think it's, uh, it's been mostly uh, seen as a children's story. Mm -hmm. And certainly a lot of us who went to Sunday school when we were young uh, learned about the story of Noah and the flood and all the animals and all that kind of thing, and it's a neat story for children. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, not only did have uh, had that experience, but then uh, again, of course, there was the wonderful comedy sketch by Bill Cosby on Noah. I don't know if you ever right. heard yeah, that. That was one of my uh, favorites growing up. Have have the record. I have nothing to play the record on, by the way, at this point <laughs> in my life, but I still have the record in which uh, that sketch was there. Uh, and so uh, there, it's kind of interesting that a lot of people just sort of never get past uh, the juvenile sort of approach to this particular story. But it's really a very rich story. It's a rich story in a lot of respects uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, it impacts upon uh, really the sense uh, or our understanding of evangelism. We have to recognize that Noah was essentially the, the father of everybody. Mm -hmm. That uh, the whole human race essentially came down in one form or another from Noah and his, and his children. And so uh, he was able to preserve the blessings that God had in mind, uh, blessings that would in fact permeate the entire globe and all nations and peoples. And so there's a sense in which we learn something a little bit about evangelism in this story. We also learn some things about theology. 
It's interesting to note that uh, in this story or this section of the, of the book of Genesis, it's the first time that we're introduced to some key theological terms like righteousness and grace. And so those kinds of things are pretty important. And then, of course, we have the covenant of Noah in which God promised not to destroy the planet again in the same kind of way uh, that, as he had done. And so the whole notion of, of a covenant and God's commitment uh, to, uh, to a people, in this particular case, the covenant to the entire human race, uh, is also a key theological concept. So we get introduced to a lot of really rich theology in the story of Noah if we take it past sort of the children's story kind of issue. And then, of course, there's the issue of sin and judgment, and that's the reason for the whole episode, really. Uh, God uh, uh, was uh, pouring out his judgment upon a people that had completely rejected uh, his reign and rule in, in their lives. Uh, so we can't really study the story of Noah without really reflecting on the nature of sin and how God feels about it and what God desires to do ultimately about it. And so the notion of sin and judgment, uh, both for uh, believers and unbelievers, is part of the story of Noah. And then I think the, the best part is how, how it uh, really illustrates the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, because the, the ark is sort of a symbol, a type of the salvation that we have in Christ that he carries us uh, through and enables us to escape from the wickedness that surrounds us. So if you sort of take it past Bill Cosby's approach and take it past the, uh, uh, the, sort of the, the childhood stories that we all loved when we were in Sunday school, uh, there's a lot to be had by the study of this series. I honestly don't know how long it's going to last. We might uh, take uh, anywhere between four and eight sessions to sort of okay. explore it because it's that rich. It's, uh, it's pretty neat to, to, ex to take it apart and see those kinds of elements. So we will be exploring this together for a number of weeks anyway mm -hmm. in all the detail yeah. and color and richness of truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't know, honestly, if I've ever heard a sermon series on Noah. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's been sort of relegated to Sunday schools very yeah. frequently, and yeah. so people tend not to preach on it. But uh, I have before, and it's a, it's a rich series. Sounds wonderful, and we certainly invite people to join us on Sunday nights for the next several weeks as we explore the story of Noah together. Thank you for joining us today, and have a wonderful day. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we discover why this collection of wasps near the mid-rises is actually a good thing for Shell Point. We'll also visit the Springs where their recent wedding-themed event spurred residents to share some of their own wedding stories. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, May 28th. I'm Rochelle Chernowski. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow.